Okay, um, Sunday morning, the morning after the last video. Um, so we've got the uh, proof of concept board configured here um, with all of the AC gear up on the top left hand side, which we'll get to in a little bit, uh, probably the next day or two. I want to consult with an electrician on some of those things, the auto transfer switch. Um, we've got our inverter here, um, all wired up and uh, producing. Let's see if I can get can see uh, the Antrax, number of uh, let's see watts consumed, I guess, at that point, 13. Uh, possibly that's the input voltage. Uh, I'll have to check on the manual. But everything's wired up. We've got the, uh, uh, let's see, we've got the Outback um, charge regulator. Ah, uh, glare. Okay. Let's see if we can use our hand and what you can see right now, um, the sun has gone down at this point, but so we're getting, uh, there's not much draw or load on this right now, but we're getting uh, great 39 volts at 0.6 amps in DC, and the output is 14 volts at 1.9 amps, and that's with absolutely no no load except, except for a little bit of irony. I put the battery charger for my my Hilti drill on here. Um, so basically, what we've got is um, I've got my I'm using this 14 gauge three pair wire right now temporarily to hook up the panels downstairs. We'll run down there in a little bit and you can see them. But I've got that coming in, um, just kind of terminated into this primary 60 amp rated. Eaten, oh, you know it's not going to let me. I'm going to have to shut it down, basically. Got everything coming into here. Um, a positive and negative. My, my ground right now is actually running all the way downstairs through this unit, through the pass-through. Um, not cannot activate this unless the door is closed. You can see that the voltage has gone down some somewhat. It slowly goes down after the voltage, after the input line is cut, and then slowly crawls back up. Um, but yeah, we're getting 36 volts um, inbound at uh, however many amps we can. Comes in, and... Uh, terminates there, and that's the end of that circuit. There is the question of this wire, what you might be looking at right here, and that was whether or not the uh, the negative from the PVs, which are 36 volts, should be shared with the common negative bus down here, um, which is on the 12 volt battery system. Um, and the reason we're a little bit confused about that, we went with an independent negative bus on the, on the PVs, is because our thinking was the diagrams from the um, the Outback tech, um, technical installation guide basically depict a 24 volt battery system and a and a uh, and a 24 volt PV array, and that might seem acceptable to share the, the negative the common negative there, but we're not quite sure um, about that. So we were just to be cautious. Um, we're doing that. I've got this flexi tube conduit here. Um, the liquid tie. We actually didn't have any of the right fittings. You can see I've got one fitting there, one fitting here. So that's kind of a failure, but we had some experience cutting that and running that, so that was kind of a learning process, knocking out these punch outs. None of us are electricians. Um, but um, yeah, so then the, and then the circuit, the positive coming out of the, the batteries comes out of here. Let's see if I can find it, can identify it here. Comes out, comes down, and uh, goes into this main disconnect right here. It's the pull out one. And that shuts off the, the uh, one of two legs into a parallel circuit for the uh, for the inverter. Coming out of it, it's right here. It's one of two two leads terminating on the positive tip on the Xantrax, and the other one is from the battery, which comes into the battery disconnect switch, which is the square D unit. I'm gonna have to shut it off, which I'm pretty sure is gonna power down the the uh, the charge controller. So yeah, really only using one of the the three poles in that. So, uh, the charge controller is still running. It's either got some some battery life, or or it's a. It need, I know at least the battery needs to be turned on to initialize it. Uh, simply turning on the PV does not initialize the charge controller. So you have you almost certainly have to use it. Yep, bring that back on. And uh, all of our all of our negatives, or excuse me, all of our uh, earth safe neutrals, or, God, all of our earth grounds are terminating into a junction box here, 
all of our our negatives are here. Um, it's a bit confusing um, at first, but uh, then a little bit ugly of a wiring mess here. I'll get some Velcro and some cable ties and clean that up. But we're happy to report that the battery is charged. You can see this uh, furnace wire we ended up using here. It's also four gauge. So if you open up the page 15 or whatever of the the Outback uh, series manual, this is the wiring diagram that they depict, and we wired it up and. We've been able to pull quite a, quite a few uh, loads through here. Uh, this afternoon we'll wire up this uh, auto transfer switch with some utility power and uh, you know let this battery discharge. I'm, at some point here the ambient amount of power that's being drawn by this this battery charger here will be sufficient enough to given the sunlight exposure right now. If there's any power coming in to this unit it's because light is reflecting and hitting it because of where the panels are. Yeah, everything is good to go. That is a successful proof of concept that this, this will work. Um, one thing to note, make sure that you ground out your, uh, your uh, negative bus bar here with your uh, common ground and make sure that... Uh, I really should probably have this unit's got a gr um, grounding bus connection so does this unit. All of these disconnects really should be grounded um, into here, but we're going to have to come up with a better solution than this... Uh, so then this uh these are basically like the neutral or the ground bus bars that you get for GE terminals or GE load centers. Um they just happen to be essentially um effective for this. I think they I think they're made out of brass. They look like they might be copper, but they're probably just brass. So they're probably not rated at sixty amps. But for this for this test we're good, at least with the, the neutral. So um yep, let's head downstairs and I'll show you the wiring. Oh yeah, fluke meter. Nice, not quite sunny day in Pittsburgh as usual. So, one thing to note: the south-facing, south-sloping roof on the apartment building across the way would be a perfect mounting point, but uh, not available at least for this test. Garden's looking nicer. On a so yeah, here they are. We just got three of them turned out, and it's a hybrid series parallel right now, um, with that one on the left being um, in parallel. YouTube video. Say hi, Sam. <laughs> so yeah, and then just flexi conduit. Just temporarily run up there and mount it in. And we're using 12-gauge uh, stranded wire. Um, even though it's only rated at 20 amps, uh, we figure that... Uh, the inverter can't draw more than 15 amps, so um, we're pretty safe with that just for the temporary test. i got to figure out a solution for terminating this MC4 into a, into a connection box or a mounting stud, a termination stud, so that's that. There it is, and at some point here, find five minutes and drag these panels over to this side of the building, where, as you can see, nothing probably right now, the sun is slowly making its way across the southern sky and we'll soon be hiding behind those buildings. So, anyway, that's that. Signing off. See you soon.